Hi there, I'm Ben and welcome to part three of my full platinum walkthrough for Elden Ring. Right, we are in Waypoint Ruins, couldn't remember the name there. Uh, yes, yeah, where we left off at the end of the previous video. This is Selen over here who we spoke to. Uh, and now we're just going to warp out of here because we can. And in this video we're going to do the east side of Limgrave. Uh, working our way south, starting from this grace point here. Uh, and then heading up the east side of East Limgrave, if that makes sense. Uh, yeah, so you've seen me ride this way before. I'm going to ride past these bears a bit more uh, carefully this time. And I will grab a couple of these things. It's not important that you do. It's just a golden rune and some gold-tinged excrement. I'm sure that will come in handy. Uh, there's nothing important there, so don't worry. We're just getting onto the road and, uh, and heading south. So we're at the point where we picked up the map here. And uh, you got that bear scratching the tree. And then head south, and there's going to be a merchant. Now, I have said that you can kill the merchants if you want to. And you, they do drop something called a bell bearing. Uh, and then you can buy their items from within round table hold, which we will go to in this video for the first time. Um, it's up to you. Uh, I will let you know, I will go to each merchant like I'm going to do here. So look out for that white mark on the ground. Even if you're playing offline, that will be there. It's to tell you that this merchant is here. So I've just followed the road uh, and just gone off from the road to the east slightly. And uh, yeah, you can speak to him here. This guy doesn't have anything that we want or I want that we need. It might be something that you need here. Who knows? Maybe you want an axe. I don't know. Uh, some smithing stones. There's some cookbooks that we don't particularly need either. Uh, some arrows, some different types of arrows and shields. So, if they make something, if you press square on the cookbooks, it will show you what they make before you actually buy them. So, if there is one you're looking for, uh, then go for it. They're, like I said, we don't craft much, if at all, really. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, don't worry about it. So, I'm just going to kill these and then just go right to the south point now. You're, so, I'm still following the road at this point. Go past this ghost. You can speak to those. They just kind of point and say things <laughs> that's about it really and then uh, yeah eventually you're going to get to this grace point and you'll be just to the west of the castle and that's where we're about to go mainly to get the golden seed so I'm just going to refresh that's what I'm doing here whenever I do that whenever I just sit at a grace point like that I'm just refreshing my flasks so as you come up this side here stick to the right so this is where we are this is the castle on the southern tip, southeast tip. Another thing as well is when you do go to a merchant, it'll mark it on your map for uh, for reference later on. That was patched in; it wasn't there to start with. Uh, yeah, so stay to the east, or not stay to the right hand. I'm getting confused now, confusing myself. Stick to the right hand side as you come up here. There is a ballista at the top. You can see all the arrows in the ground. Uh, so stick to the wall, and then once you get here, you're safe. And then slowly just kill these guys. Don't go too far forward. Much one of the uh, demi humans doesn't follow you. Yeah, so there's one on the stairs here. And there's one to the right. And there's one at the bottom of the stairs as well. And then at the top of the stairs, there is a pumpkin head who we've literally just fought at the end of the last video. He's much easier out in the open. Uh, you can. The, the gate is there on the left hand side. So if you ever just want to. Uh, bring in a summon, just go for it. You know, with the spirit summon the ashes. Then, uh, yeah, just do it all the time. If you feel like you need to, just just do it. There's no reason not to. Um, he will help out and he'll stick with you through it the whole time. So, uh, yeah, the, it wasn't too bad, but again, we don't have the spell. This guy's a bit more difficult for some reason. I don't know what's going on here. Uh, yeah. Stop it. Right. Uh, die. Okay. Yeah, so the main reason we've come up here is the Golden Seed, which we're going to get in a moment. Uh, this is the Brass Shield. Yes, that's a random drop. You more than likely won't get that. Uh, but you will get this, this. We now need two Golden Seeds to put another charge into the flask. Uh, it goes all the way up to five at one point. There are way more than you need, or it seems like there's way more than you need in the game. There's quite a few more. Uh, you will, by the end, you'll be picking them up and not actually using them. So we're going to go in for, into Fort Hate, Height, whatever it is, Hate, Hate, I'm going to go with. Uh, yeah, just shoot the two guys. you got one on the top of the wood there, and one on the corner. Just don't go too far in, because there are rats on either side of these uh, these fortifications here. There's one there, in front of the dead giant. 
there's one that is weirdly running up there uh, and then there's one here and there's blood roses everywhere which are a, a crafting thing that we will never use much like most of the stuff we pick up uh, usually that's rat, that rat is underneath the stairs there uh, so I don't know what's woken him up but he's, he's off he's going for a wander yeah usually just to the left now there there <laughs> that's where he usually is um, yeah going into this room just stand back there are going to be two enemies on either side you've got a rat and uh, one of the normal weird guy things I don't, I don't know what those are uh, and in here is another cookbook like I said we aren't going to be crafting anything so it doesn't really matter to us uh, yeah and then that all we like I said all we need is the golden seed but we might as well clear this place out for the most part uh, there is an ash of war up here bloody slash which we need to kill a, uh, a soldier for this guy here he does have a, a large shield, so we will block the... There we go, he's going to completely block that. And if that's the case, then just switch to Pebble. And he will give you a bloody slash. Now, this place is part of a side quest. Not one that we're going to do. Uh, you're supposed to clear this um, this Fort Hate, and then uh, go and speak to a guy who's on the north. He's stood on a, a ruins. Um, and then he'll come down here, and then later on he becomes crowned as king or something like that it's not something we're going to do it's not necessary at all so we're not going to do it but uh, what we are going to do is come up here and get the dectus medallion left hand side there's a left and a right obviously but we also don't need that it, they actually you you use them to go on through lifts certain lifts you've got these medallions uh, we don't actually need this one because we're going to take a short shortcut up but it's there if you want it i'll show you where it is later on we can't use the lift it's a lot further on yet uh, but yeah, just grab it anyway. And then go back to the uh, the third church, which we'd already been to. And we'll continue heading north in the east side now. There are a few dragonflies here. This one is not playing ball, but the other one did. Um, yep, yeah, no, I'm give up in a moment. Yeah, just leave him. Uh, dragonfly head is going to be the only thing we do craft, those, uh, those boluses for the poison. Uh, we do later on get an incantation that removes all status effects uh, and that will be our main way of getting rid of status effects later on. Uh, there's a little uh, dung beetle that we don't need but it's on the way so might as well. And we're just going to use these spirit jumps to uh, to get to the top, basically a shortcut so we don't have to go all the way around past the giants and things. Some wolves here, kill them if you want. Uh, Trina's lily there, we don't actually need those but they are one-offs. And then up again. Uh, and now we're going to... You're going to notice the sky is going to turn. And everything... All the, the life is just going to drain out of the world. Uh, and this is as we're going back into Kaelid again. The only reason we're doing that is to go up to this church to sit at the grace point. So we can... Uh, mainly so we can walk back here later on. There you can see, you'll see it all drain. I think it's pretty cool actually. Um... And yeah, well, this is going to get us to round, round table hold as well. So I didn't get off the horse there. It automatically took me off the horse. And when that happens, it means you're about to get invaded. This will happen here. This is Anastasia, the Tarnished Eater. Um, she's simple enough. She does remind me of... The name is not going to come to me. It begins with M from the other Darks, from Dark Souls. She's in Dark Souls 1. She's in the uh, swamp. Oh, no, I can't remember her name. Uh, Miranda. Is it Miranda? Yeah. I'm sure you know who I mean. Similar kind of fight. Just get rid of her. Should be easy enough. Even though I did take a hit there. Uh, you're going to get the, the Sacred Scorpion Charm. This is to do with Faith. Again, we, we aren't using that. So it's no good to us. But, like I said, the main reason is to... Uh, so we can just walk back here later on. So we don't have to uh, do a long journey back. A couple of cookbooks here. We've got the Missionaries 3rd and the Nomadic Warriors 14th. There are a lot of cookbooks in this game. There is lots to craft and ironically there's just there's so much dedication to put into the crafting but you don't ever need it. Honestly, you can get through the whole game without crafting a single thing. Uh, yeah, so if you sit here, Melina is automatically going to come and uh, speak to you. So when she does, she's going to go on. I've cut this bit out. But uh, yeah, say that you do want to go to Roundtable Hold, and she will take you there. Uh, if she doesn't 
turn up for whatever reason. Uh, I don't know why she wouldn't. Don't worry, we will go there eventually. Uh, it's not necessary that we go here now anyway. But the first time you ever go to Round Table Hold, you will get a trophy. There's not much we can do here at this point anyway, so don't worry. Um, I don't. I can't see why she wouldn't turn up for you at this point. Uh, this is kind of we've gone far enough because we went into Kalid there at the at that point. That should be where she uh, kind of meets up. And we've we've lit enough grace points, so you, you can just go around to speak to everyone. D here. This guy's just called D the Hunter. Uh, he's quite important later on. He's uh, part of uh, a side quest that leads to a missable boss, so he's going to be important. This guy here sells you incantations. We don't use incantations. Well, we'll use one later on. Uh, but yeah, we, we're not built for it. So uh, yeah, I mean, if you want to go that way and mess around with the incantations, then go for it. Basically, pyromancies and things like that. Then uh, yeah, go for it. Uh, yeah, this is basically Firelink Shrine, as you can probably guess, or the Nexus it's probably best to compare it to. Uh, loads of NPCs around here. This one doesn't talk. Just kind of interact with them and you'll get a gesture for what it's worth. Uh, and this is the main merchant of the game. You can offer here the bell bearing. So if you kill the merchants elsewhere, you can come here and offer the bell bearing from that merchant. And you can then purchase all the stuff that they were selling, which is really handy. I'm actually going to purchase this memory stone here. Uh, there are some stone sword keys, which we'll get later as well. So the memory stone gives us another um, slot to put a magic spell in. So we can carry three at the moment. I'm not going to add another one because we've not got anything particularly interesting at this point. Feel free to add the arc because we still have that one. Or if you bought some others, then uh, feel free free to add them. Uh, mainly, we're going to get the memory stone slots. So because some of the the spells we get later take three slots, so it's best to have as many as possible. So we're just going to grab it now while we're here. Uh, this is our main smith, um, the the smith at Church of Ella, the the table. We can only go up to level three on our weapons. But with this guy, we can go all the way up to the top so we can get the trophy. So this is our main guy. Uh, we're not going to upgrade any of the stuff we have here. Don't need to. Uh, and then once you've uh, had a look through there, it also duplicates Ashes of War. Um, go through his, di uh, his dialogue completely exhausted. He'll he'll talk about being a prisoner. And then we're going to go into here, which and this is Fear. She's also extremely important. She is tied to D, who's sat outside. Um, they're, they're sort of side quest that goes to a missable boss. So at this point here, just go in and speak to her and let her hold you. Um, this is the only thing you need to remember to do if you can't get to round table hold yet. Don't worry, this is the only thing. You're not going to miss doing this. You can just do it later. Uh, so she's going to hold you and you're going to get a Balderkin's Blessing and you're going to lose 5% of your health while you're holding a Balderkin's Blessing. So we're actually going to use that later to get rid of it. Uh, we just need to speak to her again so as you back out of the being held go back into being held <laughs> and then you're gonna have talk in secret appear talk to talk to her in secret and it just kind of moves her dialogue on uh, in preparation for later on when it's going to change so just do that for now and then once you've been held again just uh, just back out and, uh, and we'll leave and yeah this place is gonna open up more there is an NPC fight we can do at this point but it doesn't benefit us to do it at all. We might do it later just for a few runes, but we don't need to. Uh, yeah, and then we're just going to warp out. So the, the the place is actually down in this bottom left-hand corner of the map. And that's how you get there. You can warp there anytime once you've warped there once. And we'll go back to Smoldering Church and continue on. So, yeah, don't worry if you didn't get Melina turned up. I don't know why she wouldn't, but just in case she didn't, uh, don't worry. We can do it a lot later on. What I did just then was uh, use Balkan's Blessing, by the way. Uh, so I went into the inventory and found it. Uh, used it. What it does is it, it uses a little bit of FP, so your blue bar, uh, and then gives you a really high poise. So if an enemy hits you, you don't get knocked back. It's a one-time use. Once it's gone, you'll actually notice my health. that You see it there at the top. There's a little bit missing. Uh, that's the 5% or so that the Balkan Blessing takes away while you have it in your inventory. One time use, if you if you do want to use it, go for it. I mean, you probably never will, but <laughs> uh, I mean, properly in combat. Uh, and if you want another one, you just go back and see Fia again and uh, let her hold you and you get another one. And you can just keep doing that, cycling it over and over. But, I mean, yeah, it's better to have the health. What, what we needed to do was talk to her in secret. That was the main thing we were doing it for. 
Right, so I've come to Summon Water Village, so I've come back down the hill, uh, gone back into Limgrave now, and uh, we're just going to fight this Tibia Mariner. Um, there's a few of these throughout the game. Very easy. Uh, just hit it with spells. Usually what they do, you're going to see it's dis gonna disappear there. I was already in mid-cast, but it's disappeared. Usually they disappear, uh, and they're quite far away from you, but this one's warped right next to me, which is extremely rare for these guys. Uh, usually they're quite timid, um, they'll warp away, and they actually keep doing spells, bringing skeletons up like this, uh, to to uh, to fight you. Um, but this one doesn't do it at all, and comes in for a bit of a, a melee fight. Obviously I'm not doing melee, but he's, uh, he's going for it, which is uh, uncommon. So if he doesn't do this for you, which he probably won't, he'll be over in the far corner that I'm going to run to in a moment. Uh, now we don't actually need to kill this guy because we are going to get another death root. Uh, the reason we're doing this is for the death root. Uh, it's part of D's thing, uh, the guy we met earlier on in um, Round Table Hold. It's so you can be teleported to another place. It's it's all, again, it's not necessary, but I'm going to show it you in case you want to do it. It's so you can get all the beast weapons. Uh, so we'll do that afterwards. So yeah, he might come over here, and there'll be loads of skeletons popping up all over the place. Uh, they're not difficult or anything like that, they're just a bit of an annoyance. Uh, but yeah, that's why we've just done that. Along Again, it's along the way, it's extra runes, so might as well. Uh, yeah, D usually is up here the first time uh, as well. If you come up here before going to uh, Round Table Hold, he'll be up here. He'll kind of warn you about this village, and he's after all the death routes and things like that. But uh, we kind of skip that that part of it. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start putting points into Dexterity and Strength. I know that sounds completely weird considering we're magic, but I'm going to be picking up the Katana very short, not the Katana, a Katana, the Ucha Katana, uh, which is a weapon I like, and it's the one I'm going to use through the rest of the game. It's 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 just a weapon I, I like to use. Um, we're going to turn it into a magic one, of course, so it scales with magic, and what it also does is it adds a bleed effect, which it also helps. Um, and we need 15 dex and 11 strength to wield it. So I'm just going to put a few points into that. Um, here's another merchant just before we cross over the bridge. Again, if you really want to, you can kill him and trade in the bell. But it doesn't really have anything to, uh, to sell, so we're not going to bother with him really. He's on the map now if we need him. And this is where we are. We're coming across the north end of uh, Limgrave, so that's where we've come from, the church, down through the village there, and we're going up over to the bridge now. Uh, there are ways to artificially add dexterity and strength, and we will actually be doing that. There's a, a, a saw seal, they're called saw seals and scar seals. They're a type of talisman uh, that add that, but um, I'm not going to guarantee that you will wear it because it makes you into a bit of a glass cannon. So we're going to do it the, the harder way or the, the permanent way and actually use points to get up to there. Again, if you don't want to use the Uch Katana, then you don't have to. You can just use an, any other w weapon in that hand. Uh, there was another pumpkin head. Nice easy one. And then we're going to pop this. So we're on the opposite side of the bridge now. I'm just going to bring the map up again so you know where we are. Yeah, I don't want you getting lost in this. It's obviously a lot bigger. And then when we get further on, you're basically near the, the lake that looks like an ear. Uh, when you ride up here, you're going to hear um, somebody shouting. There, you can see at the bottom, hello, I'm stuck. This is uh, Alexander. He's he's a bit like uh, Onion Bro from Dark Souls. He's that sort of character. Um, kind of, I don't want to say useless, but kind of but unintentionally you know a bit bumbling um so yeah i'll go up speak to him uh talk to him and uh, then he's gonna ask you to free him so agree to do that and then just walk around the back and then start hitting him uh, i'm using charged r2s but i think any any attack works really you just need to do it enough so just keep doing that i'm gonna pop him out the ground there and uh, the reason we're doing this is he will help in two boss fights which is, is one is a lot more helpful than the other, uh, for sure. You're going to get a gesture from him, and then you're going to get some exalted flesh for helping him. And then just speak to him, exhaust his dialogue, and we're ready to go. So once he says he's going to go to the festival, uh, that's all you need to know in uh, Red Main Castle. And then uh, off we go. And now we're just going to go up the other side here. 
oh nearly almost and uh, we're going to look for this door on the left we're going to go into another tomb and this is where the Uchi Katana is so this is where we're just going to clear this tomb quickly ish and uh, and grab that along the way lots of grave glove wart one in here uh, you only need one per uh, so what grave glove wart is for is um, summon ashes it upgrades those uh, you only need one per level so you only need one one per ash if that makes sense uh, you only need one two per ash so it goes up like that so the more grave glove wart ones you have the more you can upgrade each one uh, not that you're going to spread out the usage. I would imagine you'll find one you'll like and you'll stick with it. Most likely the Mimic tier, which we get later on. Uh, so yeah, this is a, a skeleton place, so you are going to need to confirm the kill again on all the enemies. Can stagger them quite easily. Uh, and it just takes so long for this animation, I'm not actually going to do that on any of the others. It's just quicker to uh, stagger them and hit them with a bit of magic. So there's one at the bottom of the stairs here in the column. Don't move around too much when you're fighting skeletons because they're not uh, visible right away. But uh, all of a sudden they'll just be everywhere. So do watch out for that. There's one underneath there we'll get in a moment. There's two here. One with a bow, one with a shield. Oh no, wasn't ready yet. Let's confirm the kill on both of those. Don't go down those stairs yet. There's a few with arrows which can get quite annoying we're just going to go underneath here there's one here I know I just missed some grave glove what I get it on the way out but and we only need one one so <laughs> we're gonna get more than enough and then under here there's uh, another one so yeah don't move so much because you will wake them all up another one grave glove wart that is the one we actually need is a uh, ghost glove wart there's another couple down here stick to the right hand side wake this right hand one up first so you don't get both of them Grave Glove War, and then you've got some Grave uh, Violet Grave, Grave, Grave Violet, that's the one. Uh, that you can farm down here, so I've not marked that. That'll always be here, that you can keep coming back. Uh, with this, these skeletons, a better way to do it, there's the Uchi Katana, that's what we came down for. A better way to do this is stand where the Uchi Katana was, and then hit them right and left, so they don't fall off like it just did, because obviously you need to confirm the kill with these guys, so uh, don't, you don't want to jump down just yet, because there's another two archers. So you want to kill those first. The torch will do it as well, by the way. There is one over here by the Grave Glove War as well. He's going to keep shooting the one that I knocked down now. So if you can hit them to the side rather than sort of forwards, he won't fall off. This one can be a bit annoying to try and wake up. There he is. Wake up. Now I'm getting shot. I got straight through the shoulder. I used to be an adventurer, but I took an arrow to the shoulder. <laughs> I know it's knee, I know. I drop down, there's going to be quite a few here, so just back away if you drop down. Give yourself some space, there's four of them down here, and then another two afterwards. So got one, there's one there, and then there's another two off to the left, you see just got up there. And there's one at the back there as well. Oh no you don't. They do get come up to you pretty quickly with the roll that they do. All of a sudden they're just there. Okay, so another two will wake up once you hit the door. Uh, we could, in theory, leave, but like I said, we're, we're going to explore the places we do go to. Um, for the most part. And uh, there's a nice, simple boss here. And it's another place to get a death route, so uh, we'll get that. Another couple. Oh, wasn't ready for that. And uh, 
now we're good to go. There's another item there I just missed, but never mind. It was a random drop anyway. And uh, now we're going to do the boss. So this boss is Black Knife uh, Assassin. The scimitar is actually quite a good sword, uh, a curved sword. And we can use it now. I do almost switch to it, but then I thought, no, you're probably not going to have one. So um, I'm going to leave it. So this guy, you want to keep your distance for sure. For some reason, uh, there's probably a story beat to it that for some reason he, you go in and he's got most of his health is already gone. There's probably a reason for it. Usually he doesn't dodge this much. Usually he, he just takes rocks to the face. <laughs> uh, yeah, that could be interpreted wrong. Um, yeah, he's, he's nice and simple. You just don't want to get close because they're extremely quick when they want to be, but they kind of don't really do much from a distance. They just kind of stand around and wait to get hit, which is a bit strange. But as soon as you get close, they will, uh, they'll hurt you. Uh, the Assassin's Crimson Dagger there, that's another um, medallion thing that you can use, another a talisman. So this is one that we got earlier on. So critical uh, hits restore HP, so uh, when you kind of parry and then you repost, you'll get HP back. It's not something we do a lot, so no point having that. We're actually going to get a very good one shortly, or a much better one anyway. So grab the death root up the chest and then uh, then just teleport yourself back to the start. And that's all we needed from this catacombs. So again, leveling up. Any spare points, uh, just put them into decks. Oh, I couldn't de level up, never mind. Not enough yet. Um, yeah, decks up to 15, strength up to 11. Uh, yeah, so here I'm having a look. So we've got the scimitar. I thought, oh yeah, it's actually not this... It's it's a better type of weapon. It, it's, it scales better as well. Um, but then I thought, no, you won't have it, so I'm not going to use it. But here's the Uchikatana. That's the one we need. 15 decks, 11 strength. Uh, personally, a weapon I like to use. Uh, other people like to use the Moon Veil, um, which we will get later. It's It demands higher strength and decks, so uh, I don't really want to put many more points into it. But if you prefer that one, you can always use that one. I will show you where it is. I'm just going to clear this camp and head to the other side and get our first legendary weapon, which we do need for a trophy. We've actually not done much trophy-wise. I know we just got one by going to uh, Round Table Hall, but with regards to adventuring around we've not actually got anything that we we need yet <laughs> and we're what nearly three hours in by the end of this video so yeah just snipe everyone you might as well there's a couple of dogs there is actually two dogs down there i didn't see the other one i thought it was just i don't know carpet how can i not see it? it's right there i just obviously was concentrating on these two guys on the right but i walk right up to it in a moment and just don't realize it's there it's because it's laid back down again maybe there no idea. <laughs> uh, nearly, this I thought I've not actually died yet while recording this, and I thought this is where I die now. <laughs> the stupid dog that I missed. Item here, exalted flesh. It's not something we'll ever use. And there is a, a beast crest heater shield. So if you do use shields, this is not a bad one. We don't. So yeah, all the other dogs, I've been hitting them twice, but uh, they've died in one shot, and then this is the one that doesn't die in one shot. <laughs> Another couple of guys up here. They both dropped an item. Both exploded. Nothing particularly interesting though. Uh, yeah, and then we'll, once we're through the other side, if you stay off the path, uh, go off to the left hand side here, you'll see a grace. If you stay on the path, some wolves will drop down, some windy wolves. <laughs> uh, so just avoid those. And come straight here. I'll show you where we are on the, the, the map in a moment. Just so you can get a reference point. Uh, but this guy in here, he is a friendly, Bernhal, Bernal, Bernal, something like that. Um, he is a merchant as well. He sells Ashes of War. Is it Ashes of War? He sells it. Something like that. There's nothing that we need from him. But he, do, he does have a quest line, and eventually in his quest line, you get a legendary weapon from him. Or 
you can just kill him now and get it and save all the messing around. So that's what we're going to do. Because he does drop his bell. Uh, we don't need to do his quest line. We just need that weapon from him. So that's what we're going to do. You need to hit him three times to get him to uh, to fight you. But when you, when he does, he actually is quite... Uh, oh, what was that? Uh, quite an intense fighter. He has got a slow sword, but uh, he will run up on you constantly. You're better off using uh, Rock Sling put in a nice bit of distance because obviously casting time is quite slow and uh, it's better for tracking NPCs for sure than uh, the other one because they'll just dodge out of the way. Pebble's quite useless against NPCs to be honest, they always dodge it. Yeah just keep your distance, he does just have a sword, he will start doing that weapon art there. There we go, killed him. Uh, so he does have uh, a pretty decent armor set as well, if you want to try that. Uh, we won't be able to use it because you will start fat rolling, but uh, eventually it's something you might want to think about using. Uh, if you struggle, I mean, personally I really don't like heavy armor, but that's what we're here for, the Devourers, Devour, Devourers Scepter, got them in the end. That is our first legendary weapon um, of, I think it's nine with the, we with the weapons. There's not actually that many, uh, but yeah, that's the first one, so... Yeah, just kill him, get it. You've got the bell now, so if we go back to that merchant in um, Mount Temple Hold, we can just buy whatever he was selling anyway, so it's no loss for us, and we don't have to do the side quest. Uh, just going to change it to daytime, so it just looks a bit better on, on the capture, that's all. And then we're going to go to Giant Mountain. Uh, the only reason I'm doing this is to get some Smithing Stone 2, and to show you about the rocks. Uh, and I actually forget to go around the front and show you what these rocks look like before doing it. But uh, you'll get the idea. Uh, yeah, there's quite a few giants up here. Uh, these giants should not be a problem for you at all. I don't know why I'm doing that. It's rock sling I want. So you might as well kill them all. I think there's five up here, so that's 5,000 souls. Souls. <laughs> Runes. Um, so yeah, you might as well kill them. There is one, he sees me, I didn't think he'd seen me, this one off to the left. It was this one I was more worried about, because he has seen me for sure. But yeah, he's, I can I can just kind of make, I think something happened, or I could hear him to the left. Yeah, now I just sort of see him there, I knew he was there. But um, yeah, we'll deal with him in a moment. That's why you should never turn your back on an enemy. Yeah, if you hit these guys in the head, you can see that the, he holds his head. Uh, they have a weak point in the head. And then after a couple, they just drop anyway. What we're actually for is the rock over there. And I was supposed to walk in front of it and show you. It will have like a blue flash around it. Uh, you can just kind of make it out on the front. There's a like a blue mark on the front of it. Uh, the basically game terminology for I break if you hit me hard enough um, it's a sort of crack with blue coming out of it uh, you can't do it there's nothing you can do to uh, to break it but what you can do is that there will be a giant or there'll be a giant crab or something near one of these statues get that to break it you're gonna see it do it so that's what I'm doing I've weakened it down so I can kill it as soon as we're done here so yeah, there you go, it's just, uh, that was actually pretty cool the way he just chopped that in half. Usually it just break, but it actually looked like he properly did it. Um, yeah, finish him off, and then go and collect what was inside. So there's five smithing stone ones in here, and a smithing stone, we've got plenty of those, but the smithing stone two we're, we're after. And then we'll, uh, we'll kill this last giant. Why not, we're here, just get a quick thousand out of it. And then we're going to go right back to the beginning of the game. We're pretty much done with uh, East Limgrave. There's not too much to see here. I know it's a rough label on the video, but that's where the majority of the time where we spent. We've moved back over towards the west now. And there we go. So that's uh, quite a few little uh, runes there. And now we're going to walk back to the Church of Ella, just for one reason. And that is to buy some arrows if you don't have some already. I think I already have some anyway. 
But just in case you don't, you should have already got the, the short bow from the merchant on the, the beach in the previous video. If you didn't, go and get that because you will need it. Uh, just purchase some arrows here. Just the cheap ones will do. Ten for now, whatever. Don't need to spend too much. Goodbye. That'll do. And now we're going to warp over to the very, very beginning of the game. So not first step. But the uh, the graveyard here, stranded graveyard, I think it was stranded, yes. And uh, yeah, we're going to use the two stone sword keys that we got. So one thing I will say is completely drain yourself of runes. So spend them all. So I've got uh, my dexterity at fifteen now. That will stop there. Uh, but I do don't have enough to go up another level. But I want to use them all. So I'm going to come and use some of these solid gold runes. So it's like a hard runes. It's the way I've always said it in Souls, you've got your soft souls, which are the ones you collect off enemies, and then you've got your hard ones, which stay in your inventory and you can use at any time. That's kind of how I've always thought of them. And um, yeah, these ones you can't use. You only use them when you need to. So just use a few of those. The the, the weakest ones are worth 200, uh, so you can get just kind of mess around. Don't crack them all because uh, you'll go over. You want to just use the exact amount almost. And uh, yeah, once you've done that, level up so you, you're empty because there is a chance you will die. A uh, bit of a suicide run coming up. Um, but yeah, use your two stone, stone sword keys there. And uh, drop down to this poisons. You can just drop in. You don't need to use the ladder. And uh, quickly run through the pool. pool. You won't get poisoned, don't worry. And then stop here. It won't get you, don't worry. Just stop here though and run you can run into the back just don't run into the wheels it will instantly kill you this thing if it hits you with the wheels or if it just runs you over in general but you can touch the back as it's moving away and you're running around down to here on the left this is a safe spot there is going to be a guy in here so be ready to kill him and then run don't go too soon though because it will if it clips you it does kill you in one and then you're looking for this place on the right and then just go straight past the enemy drop down and carry on running uh, because the thing hit the bottom and turned around it's give you the most amount of time to make it down here and then when you get to this ramp drop down here to the side choose the right hand side because there is an imp here straight away as you drop down so lock onto him and just kill him quickly and then um, kill this second one and we are safe it can't get you now which is good uh, what we're going to do now is use our bow, so put it in either ha hand, it doesn't matter which. I'm just going to put it in the opposite one to the torch, so I can switch to it quickly. Make sure you've got some arrows equipped there. Uh, and to use this now, you're going to want to put it into your hand, so use left on the D-pad, and then uh, hold triangle and press L1, and that will make you double hand your left hand weapon. And then do L1, hold L1, and then R1 to shoot. And you're shooting that statue at the back there. If you go too far down the stairs, it's going to start breathing fire at you, and it will kill you pretty damn quickly. There is an imp here on the right, so watch out for him. So yeah, basically what we're doing, just hitting this trap to make it disappear so we could safely travel through. That's not the reason we got the bow. You can get through without doing that. It's just an easy way to do it. Um... The reason we've got the bow, you're going to see in a minute, we're going to destroy that chariot that runs up and down. Got the forked hatchet, but I will never use it. Lightning grease applies lightning to a weapon. Two of them there. Right, Erd Tree's favour is what we've come down here for now. For now, anyway. Um, it's a really good talisman, early game one. Increases stamina, health, and equip load. So there's an enemy up there, and there's one directly above me here. Uh, it's the very first boss of the game, you know, the one that's supposed to kill you. This is where we're going to head down here. You can see there's a ledge below me. That's a fall you can make. So what you want to do is run across this bridge, quickly grab the Erdtree's favor. You're going to just quickly see me grab it and uh, get rid of it because I need to run. And uh, dodge this first guy and run back across. If you're lucky, he will do the jump, and you can just dodge underneath. And then quickly just drop here and you're safe. You can't drop the other side, there's nothing there, you'll just die. Because this drop is too far, if you hit the, the water you'll just die. And uh, yeah, you're safe from those two. So that is the main reason we came down, but we are doing a bit of a bonus thing here. Stone Sword Key is going to be something you want to grab here. Uh, so you're going to want to come and do this as well. 
that is quite an annoying enemy and he did kill me the first time so that's why we had a little phase there because he has killed me there with my souls it's the first time I've died which is a shame but there you go he always manages to get me this guy I don't know why uh, he's so I'm gonna start off with a rock throw it's because what these enemies do is they just yeah that so because rocks throw takes so long to cast um, they just teleport through it it's quite annoying to be honest and try and get close to you really close to you quite quickly so yeah d hit him with a couple of rock throws if you're lucky you'll get two off and then switch to pebble and kill him uh, don't let him get going swinging his axe about his, his pike about there we go I'm gonna put Erd Tree's favor on uh, the HP has gone up stamina has gone up, gone up and uh, equip load has gone up it's just a good one to have all round to start with it's not a vast amount but it's better than anything else so you watch out, you want to move to the left hand side so the chariot runs up and down the left hand side here and you've got these pots with strings holding them, that was bad timing um, what you want to do is wait until the chariot hits the wall, you know, you sort of feel it there I'm too late again, I should have gone sooner as soon as it hits the wall you want to do the uh, shoot the arrow off so the pot is able to drop down to the floor there we go and this one will hit it's a bit further this one so it's okay and uh, that's it it's dead so you've got Erd Tree Great Bow and some great arrows we'll never use them but most importantly this thing is dead and uh, it will never bother you again excellent <laughs> uh, now what we're going to just go and do is get uh, a Dragon Communion it's going to allow us to uh, use incantations it's basically the, the staff of incantations uh, we need one because we're going to use some incantation, just a single incantation later, which will heal us of scarlet rot or any poison. So it's really handy. And this is how you're going to cast it. She'll have this in an offhand or something. Some more enemies here that will appear and disappear. The the main one you worry, want to worry about is this one with the shield. He'll just appear next to you. It's quite annoying to be honest. So yeah, if you do die at any point, obviously just run back to where to where I was. And that's what I did. When I phased out, I just uh, ran back. So this guy is a bit tougher as well. He, he is like the, the other guy off the ledge. So try and get a bit from the distance. Chances are he will just phase into you like that. Uh, yeah, he does have a shield, so shields are kind of useless. Uh, Roxling's kind of useless against shields. Again, it's, it's, tr it's really tricky to keep your distance with these guys, so that's the problem. And they use a lot of wind and movement, fast movement. Uh, so, yeah. Anyway, once you've killed him, we've got the J uh, Dragon Communion seal there. That's going to allow us to use incantations later on. That's what we're here for. So the boss is actually down the, uh, the ramp. So if we carry on back to the way we came and we'll go left where we went right up the hill go left and carry on down there's a boss down there it is possible at this point I, I think I'd be okay to manage it and do it but I, I don't know if especially if you're new to the game you're going to struggle uh, you do get a golden seed for beating him if you want to go and try it go ahead it is tough um, but it is also doable but we also don't need that golden seed uh, to, to fully upgrade our health so it's one we can skip for now and just come back to later on so, uh, 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 not upgrade our health, sorry, upgrade our flasks, our tears. So what I've done is I've teleported back to the bottom. You should recognize where we are, the, the grace point there. And we're just going to ride to a new island and we're going to finish this video off. Uh, we're going to go to Weeping Peninsula next. So we're going south, even further south now. So stick to the left or right here at this point because there is a ballista in the middle of the bridge. And it's, yeah, use these wooden things as uh, as cover. But don't go too close, though, because it does explode. You can see there, there is an explosion. So if you stand too close to the wood, it will just explode through and get you still. But yeah, once you go come over here to the left, you're safe. Don't go to the right, there's another guy there. Which weirdly just doesn't move or <laughs> pay any, any attention. And, uh, yeah, smithing stone, which we have plenty of at this point. So we will start to level up the Uchi Katana. Because that's going to be the weapon I use. Hopefully the one you use as well. 
not that you have to. Uh, stone saw key, and uh, yeah, that's it. The bridge is clear. The area is clear for the most part, or what we need from it. So Weeping Peninsula is next. Some uh, some decent fights, some good stuff in this area. We will be going to a castle, which is pretty cool, and uh, we've got another trophy fight coming up. That's where we are now, down at the South Island. And uh, yeah, uh, I thought I'd have a look and see if we can level up, do some more strength, but we do not have enough runes, which is a shame. But uh, yeah, we're close, and we can start using it. Right, thanks very much for watching. I'll see you on the next one.